I would gather that most of us are not living in peace. Most of us are not living in this rest of God that is promised to us. Imagine how different our lives would be, how different our conversations would be, and how different our visions would be of our lives if we were truly in the rest of God. See, the rest of God is found when we find ourselves in the middle of God's will for our lives. But most of us are not really pleased with where our life is today, or we are always looking forward to tomorrow and what our life will be like tomorrow. But what we find within this passage is that God has given us today. Today is the gift that has been given to us. Tomorrow is not a guarantee, at least on this side of eternity, but today what will we do with it? What will we do with today even if things never change? Circumstances may never change, but we have the opportunity to change and to be transformed despite those circumstances. Because Jesus tells us that while one circumstance might go, have you ever found out that another circumstance comes your way? You get rid of one problem, what's around the bend? A bigger problem. And then you want to go back to the other problem that you just wanted to get rid of. People that are employed want a different job. People that are unemployed want that job. Somebody's always wanting something that they don't have. And that, at the end of the day, is the cause of much of our discontentment, isn't it? That we find ourselves in kind of this wilderness mentality of where we're not where we used to be, but we're not where we thought we would be. And we have this mindset of what God's will is supposed to be for our life, don't we? We look at other people and we go, I want that. Now, by the way, when we look at other people, we only see one part of the equation, don't we? We only see the part that we want to look at because that's the part that makes it look appealing and appetizing to us. We don't see the other things that go on in the background. It's like the people that would love, they go into somebody's house and they go, what a clean house this is. But they don't want to see that the person had to scrub the floors before you came. You can have the clean house, but you got to do the work. You can live in the promised land, the rest of God, but there is something for us to do to make sure that we live within that rest. Now, why is this such an important aspect? Why is it that God wouldn't let them enter into the the promised land and they had to die off before they could enter in? Well, this is what we need to understand. Hebrews 11.6 tells us, without faith it is impossible to please God. Everybody say impossible. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God wants us to believe and to be radical about that belief. But when we say that we are radical about our faith, it doesn't mean that we are some kind of Jesus freak out there with a Bible and a bumper sticker and a track ready to be handed out to everybody. But what it means is that we are earnestly seeking after God. Now, my friends, if we are not earnestly seeking after God in captivity, if we are not earnestly seeking God in the wilderness, then you can bet your bottom that we will not earnestly seek after God in the promised land. See, God wants us to be at rest, but he doesn't want us to be at rest Because our circumstances dictate that. He wants us to be at rest because he has provided it to us. But it is something that can only be obtained through faith. It can only be obtained through earnestly seeking after it. And that's why the Bible tells us 
that we are to seek after peace, that we are to pursue that peace above all else. Why? Because the Bible also tells us, the Apostle Paul says, that that peace acts as an umpire, decides what's in of our lives and what's out of our lives. It keeps us regulated, and how many of us would like to be a little more regulated in our lives? Here's a few reasons why people don't go to church. I can't come to church until I get my life together. Church is how I got my life together. Church is filled with a bunch of hypocrites. And there's always room for one more. All they care about is your money. They care about me, not about my money. Is there some kind of dress code? Yes, the code is wear some clothes. Church, it just makes me nervous. I was nervous at first, and then I felt right at home. I'm not sure I believe everything that you believe. But you can still belong. Church is for wimpy, girly men. You want to say that again? If you knew me and what I've done, you wouldn't want me. If you knew me and what I've done, you wouldn't be worried. You can come to my church even if you were brought up Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Jewish, Mormon, Lutheran, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Church of Christ, Southern Baptist, a little bit of everything and a whole lot of nothing. See, it's not about a religion, it's about a relationship. So please, come to my church. Where nobody's perfect. Where beginners are welcome. Where socks are optional, but grace is required. Where forgiveness is offered. Where hope is alive. And where it's okay to not be okay. Really?